We can test the HTTP headers quickly on the command line using a variety of tools. We can use curl, netcat, and other tools. In this video, we'll take a look at using netcat. First thing is we need to know the domain name of our site and how to get to it. So if you can browse to the site normally, just like by going to the regular IP address or domain name, then you're all set. Open up a command line. And we are going to send an HTTP request over to the server, just like a browser would do. And then when the response comes back, we'll be able to see it in the console. First thing is we need to understand how to send an HTTP request. So that's going to require at least two lines. So if we open up an editor, you can use nano, gedit, v, any kind of editor. We can write the request, but what we'll see is, is that there's going to be a problem that we're going to encounter if we just try to copy someone doing this on like a blog post or whatever. So an HTTP request starts with the option. So there's post, head, get, and so on. To just read headers, we can use head because that'll only return the headers. It won't return the body of the response. So in other words, you're not going to get the content of the web page. You're only going to get the headers. And then you need to put the page that you're going to browse to. In this case, we're just going to go to the default root page. And then we put the HTTP version. We're using 1.1. Then you'll need a host header. And that's going to be the domain name of the site. In our example, it's Matilda.local. And then you have to have two carriage return line feeds. Now, because we're doing this in Linux, we're only getting line feeds. Whenever you hit the return key in Windows, you're getting carriage return line feed. But when you hit the return key in Linux-based operating systems, you're just getting a line feed. So this isn't going to work because this is not carriage return line feed. It's just line feed by itself. So if we send this request over, it won't work, and that's why this can be frustrating when you're trying to replicate what someone else is, is doing. So we're doing to say netcat matilda.local, that's the domain name we're trying to reach, and then port 80, and we're going to send that request that we just created. But it's going to say bad request because, again, it's only sending line feeds. HTTP protocol is based on the Telnet protocol and requires character return line feeds. So to fix this, we're just going to send the characters into a file so that we can send the proper characters the way we want. So we'll say echo-ne. The E option allows us to use special characters. And we're going to replicate exactly what we were just doing. But here, we're going to send character turn line feed, which are symbolized as slash r and slash n respectively. Then we'll send the host header, same as before. And now we need those two carriage return line feeds, or two enter keys. So if we echo this out, you'll notice that it appears as if we had typed it, but we actually manually inserted those carriage return line feeds. Okay. We're going to put this into that same file that we were using a minute ago requests. And now we'll use netcat to send the request over to, in our example, matilda.local on port 80. And this time we get back the actual response and the status message is 200 because the server considered this to be a valid request. And now we can see the headers and examine the headers for any kind of problems and help diagnose what's going on with the security headers.